Hello and just hello everyone. Welcome to class 12 biology. In our last video, we discussed about uh, the first two laws of inheritance proposed by Gregor Mendel, that is law of dominance and law of segregation. In the final part of the video, I told you that uh, the law of dominance is not universal, whereas law of segregation is universal. Uh, law of dominance is not universal because there are certain phenomena which does not follow the first law. Uh, so we will study uh, two of those phenomena today in this particular video, that is incomplete dominance and co-dominance. So these two examples you can provide uh, to support your argument that Mendel's first law of dominance, Mendel's first law, law of dominance is not universal. So what is incomplete dominance and what is co-dominance? We will go through one by one. So incomplete dominance, what does it mean? So when a dominant allele does not completely mask the effects of a recessive allele, the resulting phenotype is an intermediate of the two. So what does it really mean is when there are two alleles, uh, two different alleles, and one allele is dominant and one is recessive, but it is in a such a way that uh, the dominant allele is not completely dominant. It is unable to completely mask or suppress the recessive allele. So that recessive allele, it also uh, expresses a little bit and the resulting phenotype of the offspring will be somewhere in between the two parents. So one classical example that we give uh, regarding incomplete dominance will be dog flower or snapdragon or antirhinum species. So these names given over here, they are for one typical flower known as dog flower. So here is one picture of the dog flower. So what do we observe in dog flower is incomplete dominance. So I will show you over here. So let's say we have two uh, plants of dog flower. One plant produces red flower and one plant produces white flower. So when these two individuals are crossed and if the Mendelian law of dominance would have been true for this particular plant, the F1 generation offspring should have been either white or red depending upon complete dominance. If red were completely dominant over the white, the F1 generation would have been all red. If the white uh, is completely dominant over the red, the F1 generation should have been all with white flowers. But it is not true in case of snapdragon plant. So what we observe in snapdragon plant is all the F1 generations were pink, right? All the F1 generations were pink flowered. So here we can observe that in case of this F1 hybrid, when it gets two different alleles, from one from this parent and one from this parent, from this parent it gets a capital R, and from this parent it gets a lowercase r, which means this is slightly recessive. But it is in a such a way that the capital R, the capital R is not completely dominant over the lowercase r, and therefore we observe a phenotype which is in between the phenotypes of the parents. So this, this phenomenon is called as incomplete dominance. So you can see the difference between the monohybrid cross performed by Gregor Mendel with pea plants and uh, monohybrid cross performed by other scientists with snapdragon plant. So the results were a little bit different between the two. Uh, now if we continue with the monohybrid cross of snapdragon plant, what we should do is we should self-pollinate the pink flower plant of F1 generation. So over here, if we self-pollinate the F1 generation individuals, the results over here is very different from that of Gregor Mendel's monohybrid cross. In case of Gregor Mendel's monohybrid cross, we should have got 3 is to 1 ratio over here. The phenotypic ratio of monohybrid cross should have been 3 is to 1. But in case of incomplete dominance, which is observed in snapdragon plants, uh, the phenotypic ratio is completely different from that of Gregor Mendel's 3 is to 1 ratio observed in pea plants. Over here, in, snap, in case of snapdragon plant, we see the phenotypic ratio to be 1 is to 2 is to 1. The one which is homozygous dominant is producing red flower. Two individuals which are heterozygotes, they are producing pink flower and the homozygous recessive individual is producing white flower. So phenotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1. 
However, the genotypic ratio is same for both Mendel's monohybrid cross as well as monohybrid cross which is carried out with the uh, snapdragon plant which shows incomplete dominance. So this phenotypic ratio is the main part which shows the difference between uh, the monohybrid cross of Gregor Mendel and the monohybrid cross of uh, other scientists which they carried out with uh, snapdragon plant. So this is the difference and we can see that there are two pink flowers. The so het heterozygotes are producing pink flowers because the capital R, the dominant allele, is not completely dominant over the little r, which is the recessive allele. So therefore, they are producing pink flowers over here, which is intermediate between the red flower and the white flower balance. So this is incomplete dominance. So this example is pretty important. In case of incomplete dominance, you should give the example of snapdragon plant. You should remember the other names, dog flower and antirhinum species. So this is incomplete dominance. Now we will move over to co-dominance. So what is co-dominance? So in order to understand what is co-dominance, I have given you one simple example of a cross between two kettles over here. So these are the two parental kettles which differs in their coat coloration. One is having red coat, another parent is having white coat. I have also given you the genotypes of these two parents over here. Both are homozygous for their, uh, their traits. And we see that in the F1 generation, we get an individual which resembles both the parents. In this individual, we see red coat coloration as well as white coat coloration. So in that, in that particular uh, regard, this particular individual is uh, resembling both its parents. From this individual, it got RR. From this particular individual, it got RW. So when RW and RR are, pre are in presence of each other, since they are both equally dominant, they get to express their phenotype and therefore it is called as codominance. When two alleles are equally dominant, it shows codominance. So you can write F1 generation resembles both the parents. So I told you that this particular F1 generation, it resembles both the parents in terms of coat coloration. It has got red coat coloration from this particular parent and white coat coloration from this particular parent. And why it did that? Because it has got two alleles, two different alleles, one from this parent and one from this parent. And when it is having dissimilar alleles, these alleles, since they are equally dominant, these alleles, they both get to express their phenotype, which is red coat coloration as well as white coat coloration. So I, I hope uh, you understood what is co-dominance. I will explain you further what is co-dominance in terms of human uh, blood grouping. But before we move forward, I want you to uh, understand the difference between incomplete dominance and co-dominance. So this picture over here will clarify the difference between incomplete dominance and co-dominance. In terms of uh, flower coloration, in, uh, in incomplete dominance, what we observe is neither of the allele is completely dominant or completely recessive. So therefore, we see the F1 individual to have a phenotype which is intermediate, intermediate between the two parents. So when a red flower cross, when, when a red flower is crossed with a white flower, we observe pink flower. So the pink flower coloration is an intermediate between these two flowers, these two parental flowers. So therefore, it is called as incomplete dominance. In case of co-dominance, the allele for the red flower coloration and allele for the white flower coloration, they are both equally dominant and therefore they both get to express in the F1 generation. In the F1 generation, you can see the flower petals over here. The flower petals has, uh, have got both red, flower, red color as well as white flower, white color. So this is co-dominance. So incomplete dominance and co-dominance. I hope you understood the difference between these two uh, phenomena. So one specific example provided in your textbook for co-dominance is that of ABO blood grouping in human beings. So we have got different blood groups like blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB and blood group O. I hope you are familiar with them. What determines the blood group? What determines your blood type? So that is the question, right? Uh, blood type is determined by 
the presence of the type of sugar polymers on the plasma membrane of your red blood corpuscles. So the presence of the type of uh, sugar polymer on the surface of your RBC will determine your blood group. And the sugar polymers, the type of sugar polymers are controlled by a gene which we denote by letter I, the capital I. The gene I has got three alleles. So those three alleles are IA, IB and a lowercase i or a small i. IA produces sugar type A. So here there is sugar type A, the orange circle. So IA produces this particular sugar, sugar type A. IB produces sugar type B, this blue uh, square. It is sugar type B, which is produced by uh, allele IB. And the small i, it does not produce any sugar. The thing to remember over here is that IA and IB are completely dominant over the small i. These two alleles, the IA and IB, they are completely dominant over small i. So what does it mean? When a person has got this particular genotype, IA along with the small i, only the IA will express and the blood group will be blood group A. Why? Because IA will produce sugar type A. So, IA is completely dominant over small i. Also, IB is completely dominant over i. And in terms, uh, in and if a human being is having this particular genotype, his blood group will be his or her blood group will be uh, blood type B. However, IA and IB they are co-dominant because they are equally dominant. When a person has got this particular uh, genotype. IA along with IB, both IA and IB will express and the resulting phenotype will be blood group AB. Over here you can see that this particular blood RBC will have is having both sugar type A as well as sugar type B and it happens only when the genotype is IA, IB. So hopefully this particular picture given, given over here will clarify the concept regarding human blood groups. So look at these four different RBCs. This RBC is of blood type A, this RBC is of blood type B, this RBC is of blood type AB and this RBC is of blood type O. Blood type A, you can see that it has got sugar polymer A and what are the possible genotypes for this particular uh, blood type would, will be? IA, IA homozygous, IA small i heterozygous. Since IA is completely dominant over the small i, the blood group will be type A. Similarly, uh, this particular RBC is having uh, sugar type B. And what are the possible genotypes? IB, IB homozygous or IB with along with small i. And uh, IB is completely dominant over small i. Therefore, the blood group will be type B. In this particular case, you can see on the surface of RBC, both type A and type B sugar polymers are present. This can happen only when the person is having the genotype of IA, IB heterozygote. But in this heterozygote condition, both IA and IB are equally dominant. Therefore, both the alleles they get to express their phenotype that is uh, type A sugar and type B sugar both are expressed on the RBC surface and the blood type is AB. In this particular RBC there is no sugar polymer which is protruding out of the surface and this can happen only when the genotype is two small i's homozygous recessive. So blood group O which means it does not have any sugar polymers. It can happen only when both the alleles are homozygous, recessive, that is both the alleles are too small i. So this is a good example of codominance. Uh, a simple picture, this one can explain the phenomenon of codominance when IA and IB, which are equally dominant, uh, they are present together both will get to express their phenotype, that is, both the sugar polymers will be present on the RBC surface and the blood type will be AB. 
So another way to clarify this concept will be, let's say if my blood group is A, right, if my blood group is A, what could be my genotype? So there are two possibilities. Either my genotype could be homozygous IAIA or it could be heterozygous IA with a small i. So these, there are the two possibilities for a person with uh, blood group A. And same, same goes with blood group B as well. But for blood group A, B and blood group O, the possible genotypes, there is only one for each. If my blood group is AB, I can be sure that my genotype will be IA, IB. If my blood group is O, then I can be sure that my genotype is too small I. So this is one important thing you should remember. Uh, will you be able to guess the genotype of a person if you know his or her blood group? So human ABO blood grouping is a good example of co-dominance. Now along with being good example of co-dominance, human ABO blood grouping is also a good example of multiple allelism. Why it is a good example of multiple allelism is there is presence of more than two alleles for the same gene. Like I said before, uh, the human ABO blood grouping is controlled by gene I. And if you look at the alleles of gene I, there are three alleles, IA, IB and small i, which is more than two. So if there are more than two alleles for the same gene, then it is called as multiple allelism. So human ABO blood grouping, uh, blood grouping system is also a good example of multiple allelism along with being good example for co-dominance. Now, even though it has got three alleles, in an individual human being, uh, there can be presence of only two alleles. Why is that so? Because we are diploid organisms. We get one allele each from uh, our uh, each parent from one from the father and one from the mother. So in an individual there can be only two alleles uh, but we can see, we can observe multiple allelism IA, IB and I, the small i when we make, uh, when we do study of the population of human beings. When we study population we will find there are three alleles but in, in, but in an individual human being we can find only two alleles. So I hope you understood what do you mean by co-dominance, what do you mean by incomplete dominance and I'm hopeful that you also can provide examples for co-dominance and incomplete dominance as well uh, that is given in your textbooks. Now to conclude this particular video I want to explain the concept of dominance. What, what do you understand by dominance? What is the genetic basis of dominance? Uh, let's say in case of a, an individual which is having uh, a capital R and a small r that is heterozygous, why is R dominant over the small r? Why is the capital R allele is dominant over the small r? Why is one allele dominant over the other allele? So what is the concept behind that? So to understand this, let's say we have this capital R, one allele, and this allele codes for one particular enzyme, right? So this particular enzyme, let's say this allele, it produces a normal enzyme like this. This normal enzyme acts upon a substrate and when the enzyme substrate reacts, it produces a product which is red in color and this red color results in the formation of red flower. So this allele produces red flower. What about the small r? When we have a small r which is a slightly different form of this particular allele, it becomes a modified version of this particular allele, the small r it produces a different kind of enzyme which is non-functional. The enzyme is non-functional because it cannot bind with the substrate. You can look at the structural difference. If you have studied lock and key mechanism in your class 11 of enzyme action, then it will become clear. So since this small r is producing a non-functional enzyme, it cannot 
bind itself with bind with the substrate and therefore it won't be able to produce any product that is no red color pigments will be produced over here and therefore the flower color will be white so when R allele is present the R allele will produce white flower when the capital R allele is present it will produce red flower right so over here when the two R's are present, the flower will be red. When the R, uh, when the capital R is present along with the small R, when the alleles are different, the flower will be still red because this allele will produce, this allele will produce a normal enzyme anyway in this particular individual and the individual will have red flower. However, when the individual is having two small R's, right, means both the alleles are producing non-functional enzyme then the flower color will, of that particular individual will be white flower so this is one way of explaining the concept of dominance right why is one allele dominant over the other so this is the uh, this will become clearer when you study about the molecular basis of inheritance in the next chapter so for the next video we are going to discuss about dihybrid cross and law of independent assortment. So I hope you read about these two topics in your textbook. I have given you sections over here. You can read section 5.3 and section 5.3.1. Before watching the next video, you should do the reading. I told you the reason why in my previous videos as well. So thank you.